What shouldn't you forget when going on a long motorcycle holiday trip? There are a few things that you definitely have to bring when traveling with your bike. The idea is that you only bring what you specifically need to repair your motorcycle. It doesn't matter if it's a supermoto like those or a custom bike like this one. Well, this one still doesn't drive yet, but that's beside the point. In this video, I'm going to show you what we bring in case one of our bikes breaks down so that we can fix it. And at the end, you're going to know what you have to bring to travel light, but also be prepared. There are three main categories of things that you need to fix your bike. Let's start with the most obvious one, the tools. My most important tool is a wrench and socket set. And I love this one by Proxon. That's my favorite one because it has everything that you need for the basic repairs. It comes in this indestructible steel case and it's not too expensive. My dad had the same one even before I was born. So I feel a bit nostalgic about this brand. Leon and I use it on every trip. Last year, we've installed a new exhaust on his 701. We've installed the new decal kit on his bike and we've even found this. There's no thread in there anymore. Yeah, not too good, I know. If you want to see whether we got the bike fixed last year, check out the video that I'm gonna link at the end. This big toolbox is great if you can use your dad's van, load the bikes and drive to Italy and don't have to worry about storage space. But if you only travel with your bike, you obviously want to travel light. And that means that you have to pack the most effective and efficient toolkit possible. So let me show you how you can select what to bring. If you've already worked a bit on your bike, you probably know which socket sizes you most often use. Only pack those, but don't forget the big ones that you need for your access. If you don't have a lot of experience branching on your bike, you can start getting a basic understanding by preparing your bike for the trip. Change the oil, check the brakes, tighten your chain, and maybe even top up the coolant if needed. And if you want to dive a bit deeper, I would highly recommend that you get the repair manual. That's the one used by the professional workshops and it contains step-by-step -step instructions for maintenance tasks, but also the more complex repairs. If you really want to learn how to work on your bike, that's the perfect place to start because it's basically like a Lego instruction. It's really step-by-step. -step. It's much more detailed than the rider's manual that you probably got when you bought your bike. You can try to find it for free at manualslive.com or just buy it online. The best way to start is by going through your annual inspection routine. There should be a checklist towards the end of the repair manual and just go through each task referring to the special instructions within the book and note which tools you actually use. That list will be a good starting point for your minimalist toolkit. Just make sure that you give yourself enough time before the trip so your bike is actually ready. The manual, by the way, is one essential thing that should definitely be traveling with you. But back to the tools. Now that you know which socket sizes you most commonly use, just throw in the same sizes of wrenches. Or if you don't have space issues, just add the whole package and you should be good to go. If you have space, also add torque wrenches, either one or two, depending on the range that you need to cover. We bring two one for the smaller screws and one for the axis, because this is how we ended up in the mess last year by over torquing one screw by hand. A pair of pliers or multiple different ones is also a must. And we also throw in some cable ties and duct tape. I would call these tools because you can basically fix anything with cable ties and duct tape. Definitely worth having some with you. And if you have space issues, and don't want to bring a whole roll of duct tape, you can actually take one of your wrenches, take a bigger one, and just wrap some of the duct tape around the handle like this. So that's a great little hack. What I bring for the first time this year is actually a tire repair kit. And there are different types of tire repair kits. There are those that are for tubeless setups and then those for tires with tubes. Um, on the supermotos, Leon and I both have tubeless setups. So we have this specific one that basically just plugs the hole and then there is even compressed air inside to reinflate your tire. If you run a setup with tubes, then it's a bit more tricky, I would say, to repair because you basically need to bring your tube repair kit, which isn't super complicated, but you also need to bring tire levers to get your tire off the rim and i've done that once it's a pain in the butt but i mean like if you are in that situation you probably don't have another option than to do it it's always good to get a practice run or two in with either of those methods because they're not super intuitive but it's absolutely doable and a good way to practice this is actually before you get new tires next time just drill in a screw in the front and in the back and then you have two opportunities 
to try out the method. That way you don't have to figure it out once you're surprised by a flat in the middle of nowhere. A good tool selection is super important because it keeps your bike running and you can discover stuff like this. On the craziest place. But it's not only tools that you should bring, there are also some essential fluids, and that's basically category two. First of all, there's oil. Obviously, if you have space constraints, don't take this big canister, just fill some in a smaller bottle and you're good to go. Next up is coolant, and you obviously only need that if your bike isn't air-cooled. It's especially useful here in Italy. We have 40 degrees Celsius during the day, and that's very demanding on the bike, so you don't want to run low on this. Also, some brake fluid, so your brake doesn't look like Leon's after last year's road to Mangard. We went up to the Mangard mountain and watch the sunrise but after that long windy road his brakes were completely destroyed and if you ever wonder why your brake fluid level goes down then definitely make sure to check your brake pads because it might be the case that they look like this definitely bring some brake fluid what we also bring is some clutch fluid if your clutch is hydraulic uh, that's nice. What's also important, especially on longer trips, is some chain loop. This reduces the wear on your chain and your sprockets. So definitely make sure that you take care of your secondary drive, I think it's called. And last but not least, we have some multi-purpose grease just for when you have to take out your axis or stuff like that. One piece of kit that isn't a tool and doesn't fit in any of the categories, it's not category three though, is a rain coat, rain cover, depending on where you want to go, obviously. but. My brother and I <laughs> got taught a hard lesson by nature twice. We got completely soaked and the first year we had to spend the whole night drying all of our gear with a tiny hair dryer. So I would recommend a raincoat as well. But anyways, let's move on to category three, which is a bit hard to plan for and spare parts. And we never really bring a lot of spare parts because it's so hard to determine what you actually need. But last year, a tiny spare part made such a difference in our trip. And if you want to see how that went, check out the video right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy your holidays.